Welcome to African Catholic Youth Voices, a podcast series of the Pan-African Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network. My name is Sister Titilayo Adulogu, a sister of the Michael Wendin, and I am your host today. On our episode today, I'm glad to host five great people, young people from Angola. They are the faith influencers, according to Pope Francis. These young people will be discussing with us about their cohorts, about their nation, about their projects, and what they are doing, and what they want to do for God. So, welcome to African Catholic Youth Voices, my dear friend. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Good to see you. And I uh, would like to start by asking you to introduce yourself to us. And I mean, tell us about your country, tell us about your cohort, and what you have been doing as young Angolan. Hello, everyone. My name is Elia, Elia Augusto from Hello. Angola. I am from Luanda, Angola, capital city. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mara I'm Mongolian, and I'm, I'm 32 years old. So, hello, everybody. My name is Marco Braza. I am Mongolian. I, I live in Angola in Luanda province. Hello, everybody. Uh, from here is Antonio, your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm Mongolian, by the way, uh, a captain brother. Uh, nowadays I'm not uh, around uh, Angola. Uh, I'm a DRC, whoever, but I'm an Angolan blood. Thank you. My name is Marcia. I'm from Angola. Uh, I'm living in Rwanda, the Angola capital city. Share with us uh, about Angola. Angola is one of the largest country in Africa. Uh, and it's located in Southwest Africa. Angola was colonized by the Portuguese. Uh, we are 30, 32 million people living in Angola. Most of the people are living now in the capital city, Luanda. Uh, they are searching for better condition because in Luanda, in the capital city is where it's located all the... Uh, Companies, so the people are like moving from the province to the capital city for better conditions of life. Uh, Angola is a beautiful country, rich in oil production, and it's also a fertil fertilized land, and it's also rich in, in petroleum, coffee. Uh, there's also a lot of beautiful places for tourism, for tourism. Uh, Angola, it's a, a Portuguese language speaking. 30%, 32% of the population in Angola speaks Portuguese. Uh, and uh, 8%, no, 18% eight speaks uh, um, 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 Umvundu. And the other 6% speaks Kikongo. And the wow. other different languages that we have here in Angola. Okay. We have 20, 25 provinces here in Angola. Uh, Angola, we Angolans, we have, uh, we are also known as a good dishes because Angolan people, they also know how to cook. We cook very well and other people from different countries, they like our variety of, of, uh, of food. Dishes. We are also blessed by God. We are also blessed by God because in Angola, we are the only one uh, all over the world that have the one special animal, which is uh, Palanca Negra Gigant. I don't know if the sister heard about this, <laughs> but you cannot find... Negra for the first time, okay. All right, yeah, that's fine. You cannot find Palanca All Negra right. Gigant in uh, other countries or in the other side of... or in the other uh, part oh. of the world, only in Angola. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think you okay. have a very rich uh, story about Angola. And uh, <laughs> one thing that you have not mentioned is that uh, God has also blessed Angola with uh, beautiful and handsome young people. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all, all part of Africa. We are beautiful. 
Amen. Amen. That's why I didn't mention because yeah, we look, we are like yeah. brothers and sisters because we look alike. Do you have official language? I think you have different languages now. See Portuguese, speak uh, other local dialects, I mean, local languages. So, is there any uh, official language? Yeah, our official language is is um, not not Kikongo, but it's Kimbundu. Kimbundu is our official okay. language. Kimbundu, official language. yes. So what it's is Kimbundu. English? English language to you then? Uh, not okay. really, not really. Only Portuguese language. English. We didn't learn English here. We had to go to Namibia, which oh. also makes yeah yeah. It's also border with Angola. We had to go to Namibia, Winduk. We stayed there for a while, but we are here okay. in Angola for now 10 years. So we didn't have time to improve our English because here it's only Portuguese. When we came here for the first time, we always we were exchange, we were like changing words. Né? We, we were speaking Portuguese, uh, English instead of Portuguese. So we had to learn how to speak uh, Portuguese okay. here. Okay, nice. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you very much for introducing us. Uh, I don't know Angola. if I mentioned. Uh, sorry, sister. Uh, sorry. I don't know if I mentioned, but thirty uh, percent of the people here in Angola speaks Portuguese. But yes, uh, Puch- yes Portuguese is our official language. No. Okay. Yes. Thank you very okay. Much. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I hope uh, we 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 know more now about uh, Angola and uh, Angola is rich in. Oil and all that. Anyway, we we come to we come to that. But let's okay. talk about the the world. Just like in any 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 country or any country in Africa that has experienced uh, war, Angola has also experienced war, right? And uh, yes, only these years of uh, of crisis, conflicts, and war in Angola, the church suffered uh, greatly from different uh, attacks. As many churches were burnt, uh, some yes. priests and uh, Christians, particularly the missionaries, were arrested yes. and some were even killed. Uh, what can you say now was responsible for for the war and for the long years of war in Angola? Mm-hmm. Okay. And coupled with that, I would long, like to also know that what is now the relationship since the war by the special grace of God has been put to an end. What is now the, the, the relationship between the church and the government? And uh, how are young uh, Angolans forming themselves against oppressive uh, government or oppressive leaders? So I have so many questions in that one uh, question. So uh, who is going to start that? What Valera said is our country. Thank you, Valeria. <laughs> but now, uh, going to your, your question uh, regarding to the time of war situation that they, they are not good. Uh, first of all, we need to base our argument from a colon point of view that uh, Angola was colonized by Portuguese, as my sister told, uh, told you already before. But uh, the time for independence uh, Angola was connected to one of the parties there at Portugal. It's called a uh, Partido Comunista, so a communist party. So uh, this part is the one that helped uh, the current uh, government to outstanding power. And this was proclaimed by Agustin. So the idea was like to proclaim the independence uh, differently uh, three leaders that they fought. We have uh, Efenla by Elder Robert, Unita by uh, Savimbi, and Empela by Agustinet. So the idea was to proclaim this independence uh, at the same time. Uh, Agustinet could proclaim at the same time in Luanda, the other guys in their provinces. But they are, we, we had a problem, a problem of mafia. So something went wrong, and this guy for Empela, they, they proclaimed the independence before others. So he became the president. So from there, we have the situation that uh, guided to what we call the war. Uh, this war, uh, it lasted almost 28 years. Yeah, 28 years. And what was the idea? The idea was uh, to have... Uh, to balance the power, it would be like that, balance the power. So, 
especially no. when Agustin died, no, maybe these guys would, yeah, they maybe take over the power. But the part they were looked for somebody who was not, he didn't fight in this uh, this struggle of independence that they called uh, Eduardo Guisans from Russia became the president. So this guy, Savimbi, uh, was against this idea. At least the power could be transitional. This was the cause of war that lasted 28 years. Now, many people were died. Uh, I want to bring here the point that a priest called uh, Leonard Sikofin is from the Diocese of Kunene. At the time, uh, this priest uh, tried to was well, well known by his ideas, by his, his contribution. Even he founded the minor seminar that we call today is uh, in uh, Kunene. Oh. Yes, in the Kunene. So then, doing this, this priest was against. <laughs> And was sometime uh, when he was traveling from Mongwa to another region, this priest was killed, was killed by this part. Why? Because of his idea. So we have a narration that the priest was carrying a late, was at uh, labor, what labor, uh, the mother and the husband. At the middle was killed, then they separated the body. The body of the priest they put it on the left side, and the body of these three guys, the three guys who were in the, in the car, they are put on the right side. Okay. So this showed the authority that the church suffered. Another case that the church was persecuted is that in the Kamabatela, our Capuchin brothers they suffered. On 1st May, the day of work, one of the priests wanted to celebrate Mass and to bless the instruments. But this priest was interpolated by the government, said you can't celebrate mass, and everybody was scattered to go and work. So there is no space for God. This is the problem of communism. Another point is that the men of our goods, or goods of the church, were confiscated. One of them is uh, the Scapuchin Seminary was confiscated by the state, and that thing was transformed in a school of, uh, we say, the school of the Paxin uh, that uh, we call Partido Unico. So this school was confiscated, it was misused and so. But by the time that we had this uh, second uh, republic with the proclamation of uh, uh, this uh, uh, democratic... What can, democratic say, uh, what can you say is responsible for, for all this? What can you say is responsible for this? The responsible for this is a, a human pride, a human pride, because both of them, the government, these two parts or three parts, they did not recognize. Let us see, example, Savimbi was fighting for his part. Edwin Robert was fighting for his part. Eduardo Santo was fighting for his part. No one was able to listen to another one. And these ones, these guys, they were connected with the potency Example, UNITA was connected to the uh, US and uh, MPLA connected to Russia. And uh, this Ed and Robert, I don't know where I was connected, but we had this party. This human pride, I can just say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was what led to the problem of the world pride, you remember? Lucifer. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, so is uh, what we continue to fight against. Uh, mm -hmm. in different issues, even among young people today, we have to continue to, to fight against that. But uh, since the war ended now, what is the relationship between the church and the government? Are you now allowed to celebrate mass? Martin, anytime you want to celebrate, are the people free to worship God? The church now is free to celebrate mass, to do a service everywhere. And okay. those goods that were confiscated by the state now started to re be returned. So the captain they have received their, um, their seminar now became, a, again, a seminar for the captains. Uh, those schools that belong to the church, example, school of uh, these sisters, Dorothea's sisters, where they uh, were given back to the sisters, and some other institutions, they were returned to the, back to the church. So now the church is, or the state is trying to go back. Even those guys who were confessing this doctrine of communism, now they have started to become Catholics also. 
Thank you, thank you very much. So we're, we're happy that uh, we can now practice our religion. That at least in Angola, you are free to practice your your religion. So that's a good, that's a good thing. So, and, uh, okay. The, the civil world in Angola destroy 80% of our country. The schools and the church, the, mm-hmm. everything was destroyed that time because we need to become a new ones because the world was destroyed, all the Angola, all the churches, all the schools. There was no schools, there was no church for this. The civil world destroyed everything. See, 80% of the country stayed like this. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Lunenda, for, for adding that to that. Well, I like, like I said, we thank God at least uh, things are are to normal or we are in a normal situation at least as of now that you are free things are going on hospitals uh, access and uh, other facilities within the nation uh being uh, accessed and uh, going on so as younger Golan, what uh, are you doing against this uh, uh oppressive nation um antonio mentioned about pride in becoming from a leader. So, is there anything young people in Angola in Angola doing or forming themselves? Is there any way that you are helping yourself to face this uh, this kind of challenge so that we don't uh, experience a civil war again in Angola? Xiaomi, uh, you want to start that? Um, I am going to talk about what is happening in Angola. Nowadays, uh, we are facing a very, a very rush time here in Angola because of the new president. Yeah. Uh, we are now a lot of people are suffering from from hunger. A lot of people don't have uh, a stability in our own country, and I don't know if this is the the question you're asking now. Uh, lot of the, a lot of people are traveling to another country for better condition because we cannot be we are not safe in our country we don't have uh, us young people don't have works and uh, the criminal numbers of it has increased so uh what they yeah feel, i'm just what, asking that we, we, when you have all these challenges what are you doing what are young people doing to combat these uh, challenges yeah with all this all these no school, no job, no free money, <laughs> so to say. So what are you doing? What are you doing as young people? Um, uh, what can I say? We young people, that the people that stayed here, because a lot of Angolians are traveling and going to Portugal and other part of Europe, they are going. People that are here, uh, what I see from the young people, they have opened a YouTube channel, right? And uh, we, where we communicate with each other, whenever we want to call attention or we want to call attention from the uh, the Impela, which is the government now uh, running Angola since since mm-hmm. forty eight years now, since we got the independent okay. government. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, or more. Yeah, right. Impela is what the is only one is? in the government running what Angola. We government? had. Oh. Yes, we had three presidents here in Angola, and these three presidents here that we had in Angola are, the, are from the same uh, government, which is Empela. Mm. So people here, the young people here are tired of this Empela. They, we want to change because uh, the Angolans here in Angola, we don't have good conditions of education. We don't have uh, a good condition in the health area. We have to go, we have to travel to Namibia to treat ourselves. Whoa. Yeah, we don't have, we don't find here good conditions. And the food itself is very expensive. Last year. So with all of these, how do you think the the church can help with all these? How do you think the church can help? How do you think the youth in the church can, can help? Uh we have a project developing our community here. We want to open also community kitchens. Uh, this project will start from last uh, month. But I thought 
this is a, our church uh, organized this project for young people. Also, we have a literacy project for those people who doesn't attend to the school because school here is very expensive. Even the Catholic school this time is very expensive. If you don't have a money, you cannot attend those schools because the the poor people we can call the those people suffering outside because the government doesn't uh, help them. And also we the church our church is the one help this time because we have a a group they call it charities. Maybe the sister doesn't know they call another name, but those charities the one help us the fundraising. Those, those assistance we can bring also to the hospital, public hospital, schools, and for another place when the people just suffer. Even we have one of, one of yes, in Rwanda, we have, we call Bengo, Bengo. Yeah, the people that are suffering because it doesn't have water. They, we have to buy, yes. What, what is Bengo? Bengo. Bengo is uh, uh, the name of uh, the city here. Okay. They have uh, a oh. lot of problem for uh, getting food and also some clothes for the people that live there. There is very poor those those countries, but we can help. Our church is the one help. If the church just tell about the situation of. Uh, political, our country, you see, we have a lot of problems here in Angola. We cannot talk about the politics in the church, mm. because if you talk mm. about the politics, we are suffering. They be, maybe we can close the church because of that. Yeah. Here we cannot, yeah. yes, we cannot talk. We just we have to see and live with, like with the government want. It's very difficult to to stay here in Angola. Also thank you, Ma 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 Thank you. Uh, I will I will come back to that. Well, let me ask you that um, as a BBI, that's a Building Bridges Initiative. Uh, you have your cohort there in Angola. So, what what are you? What are the things that you are doing? The church and society at large. Okay, and uh, I, I I want to believe that majority of you in the, the young Angolans are uh, making use of the social media. Many of you are on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and many and many others. Okay. So, do you think you can use this means to connect with other young people, to share your faith, and also provide economic benefit to others? You have mentioned numerous challenges facing young people in the country. Do you think you can use social media to help others to connect, to share your faith, and to also create kind of a mini mini job for yourself? So greetings everybody once again. Okay. My name is Marco. So the social media, many people have the idea that social media has to promote some bad things, and that's not true. Who promote the bad things is the human. The social media itself does not promote bad things. So what can I do? We, we are the church community. So the church community has a lot of people and has people who had a lot of different jobs. And example, we have doctors, we have reporters, we have lawyers. And this community could, could, ex, could expand herself and promote the good words for the community, promote the good words on social media. We can use the social media for good things. We can use the social media trying to convince the people to do the, the good things and not so just stay and they promote like promote like discussing or trying to offend the people or trying to promote bad things. That's not the right thing. So we ourselves could could put in our head, put in our minds so that you that can we use the things on the other things for good. Example the television, example the even our school, the, the teachers can just save a time for say about the life or say about the Bible. Thank you very much for uh, being up on this, uh, on the use of social media to connect and uh, 
you have rightly told us that social media on the on its own is not bad. Okay, it's the human that makes it bad. Okay, so it's the way we use it that makes it bad. So we can either use it for good or use it bad. But as young people, as young as Golian, you have told us how we can use social media for good to uh, benefit ourselves and the uh, neighbors and even in the school and all that. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Valeria, you want to add to that? Uh, uh, what, what I wanted to add, like Brother Marco said, uh, uh, most of the thing I want to add, but uh, me in person, what we are doing here, what is social media doing for us, is it's making, it's facilitating the communication between people that are far from Angola. You know, people that are in uh, different countries and people that have different uh, culture, like now we are doing it here. So this this is only possible because we have the social media. And with the social media, we can let the people that don't know what is happening exactly here in Angola get to know our situation. Like, it, let's talk about the war. Let's go back to the war, né? what's happening, and the situation that we are living here in Angola. Last month, the president of Angola was in England, in UK. So the, our brothers there from Angola, they were in front of the, 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 the hotel, the president was, and they were like protesting. They are saying, you, we are, yeah, we are here because we want our brother, we are fighting for our brothers and sisters that are suffering, there, which are suffering there in Angola. We want... We want the freedom. We want the government to, to pay attention to our brothers, which uh, are suffering. They don't have food. Now we are here spending the money. And we could, we had this information. And thanks to the networks, thanks to the social media, we had all this information when the president was there, the people were protesting. So social media has the negative and positive influ influence in our life. What they can say about the negative influence in our life is that uh, your life sometimes is exposed because your profile is open. Uh, anyone can go through your profile and see, uh, go to your pictures, and criminal is criminal thing is like increasing. So we are scared because of this. Yeah. This is the negative part of having a social media. But the positive yeah, part of social media, yeah, is that we can get to con we can connect to to other people. And that and that in our past this was impossible because we had to to write the letters, to connect with each other. We had to make a call, which would take maybe one hour or two days to respond. So now our life, it's like, it made our life easier. And uh, so I think social social media is have, has more positive points than negative points nowadays good. here. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. good, good uh, that uh, social media has really helped us. So I, I want to know that, do you have... Uh, uh, Anandu, maybe uh, from your school, the like cohort from your school or from your church, you have uh, <coughs> excuse me, you have a, a Facebook page that you can connect with other, just like you have said, that you can share your faith. Like today is the, the solemnity of uh, most holy trinity that we can share something, you know, with others, even those that are not, uh, those that don't share the same faith with us. We can connect with them and share our faith. So maybe on YouTube, you take small video of, 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 of the event, of an event, and share with, with others. With this, you'll be advancing your faith, and you'll be connecting, and you'll be winning souls for God. So I hope you are thinking in line with this, and I believe that uh, very soon now, you go, you're going to come out with uh, this uh, kind of uh, social media handle, your cohort and then spread and connect to other people. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Valeria. Before we end, I want to add something about our church. Now we are having a step forward because we are now organizing um, what we said. Because people now, like I told the sister, and the situation here in our country is very difficult now. People are suffer from hunger. And now we have... We, we, me, the priest, and other sisters, and we came with the idea of cooking a Saturday soup. Né? I don't know what you call for the people that don't have a uh, possibility mm -hmm. to, this privilege to, to, to eat. So we, we organize this. 
and they go there. You no, know, we give food to these people that don't have. Uh, this is a step forward because our church is also new. Uh, okay. Now we are very like, nice point getting yeah? this information and we are gathering all the things together. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Valeria mentioned something like uh, having the less privilege that uh, 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 cooking food for them and making out for them. Yes, so whenever you have this, uh, this kind of uh, event or you share with others, you can take pictures, you can make video clips, and you can write. We will publish for you. We publish it. So some of these uh, good things that our young people are doing in Africa, we want to also let the outside world know about it. So uh, young people in Nigeria can learn from you, and young people from, uh, from Kenya, from Malawi, and all that, they can also learn from you and start such in their country. So and you can also learn from other countries what they are doing that is also also good. So this the kind of relationship will continue to, to go on because the time will come that I will invite you, maybe invite uh, Angola, invite Kenya, invite uh, Nigeria, invite okay, we can share. We can share what we have been we have been doing. So thank you very much. But next time you have such a uh, opportunity or this I mean such an event, just write and they will publish will publish for you and the video can also go onto our, our YouTube. So thank you very much. You are listening to the African Catholic Youth Voices, the podcast service of the Pan African Catholic and Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network. And here with me are young people from Angola DBI Fulford. So you are still with me, my my dear friend. So uh uh, we move on now. We will look at another another area. Now, the the, the story I had is that uh, about Angola is that uh, you are very rich in oil, and but you are the second largest producing oil uh, country in, in in Africa. In Africa, and you are also endowed with some other natural. Uh, natural resources. With all this, we use say that uh, the nation is able to cater for the citizens without looking elsewhere, without getting external aid from maybe from the, uh, the the Western countries. Is the country able to cater? But from what you have said now, I, I begin to doubt that uh, that my initial uh, position about uh, Angola being able to cater for all the country, I mean, for all the citizens. Citizens. 